him. He wanna fly to Japan. Then... Uh, he wanna fly with Turkish Airlines for the first time. He wanna make stop in Istanbul. Yeah, I, uh, I got into the plane. I sat down into my premium economy seat. Got myself comfortable. I was very tired though. It was actually sleepy time. But soon after the takeoff, they served... They started serving some food. But in this case, they were serving it not all at once. They were serving it like one by one, seemingly. So they started with some starter. Some appetizer or whatever. And they took it away after I ate it. And then just nothing came after that. I waited and I waited. And they were just not following up. And eventually... I don't know. I think they... If I remember correctly, they may have even... Turned off the light in the cabin. Slightly? But I got really tired, so I just fell asleep waiting for the food. Hoping that they would just wake me up when the rest of the food ca would come. Mm. I'm low on essence. Oh, because it was supposed to be... You know, like dinner time. But they only brought the appetizer. And I knew that wasn't all of it. That couldn't be all of it. Hmm. So that was weird, but I didn't think much of it. I just fell asleep. I was just too tired. Eventually, I wake up. And it's just like the whole plane is quiet. And kind of dark. I was in the middle part. But I looked outside the window. And I saw uh, that, I don't know, it looked like we were descending. But we just took off and this was supposed to be a little bit of a longer aisle seat. Yeah, but like middle, middle aisle seat. It was supposed to be a longer flight. So it was kind of weird. And normally if we were really already landing and I just slept through the whole thing, but it really didn't feel like it. But then they would... Tell us. Oh, we are now descending. Please buckle your seatbelts, etc., etc. This and that. Thank you for traveling with us. No, nothing of that. Like, no comment. Nothing. They just started descending. Mm. So, obviously, something was off. And then... We land! And I look outside, and it's dark outside. It was already dark when we took off, but, like, it looked like really nighttime. And I see an airport outside. But kind of a dead airport. Because Istanbul airport doesn't operate 24-7. It was closed at that time. It was like past midnight. I don't know how late. Yeah, but uh, after a really short time, for some reason, we came back. And still, we landed, but still no comment. Like, that's the weirdest thing. If you fly... If you have flown before, you know that this is not normal. When you're about to land, they tell you all kinds of things. So I see the airport and this is when people start to wake up in the plane and get confused. Still no comment and then we are being asked to deboard the plane. To leave. Still no comment. <laughs> we walk by the um oh my god it feels so laggy right now we walk by the um cabin attendants and leave the plane and they just say goodbye <laughs> we're all confused and they say please just go inside there into the closed empty airport like they they opened up one room one room with uh one single security check walkthrough thingy and maybe two airport staff, maybe. At most. But this is a big ass airplane. This is like, how many? I don't know how many people they fit in those. 300? It felt like a lot of people. Hmm. So they make us go in there and ask us to go through all of the um, security check again. Like just the, the actually just the hand luggage stuff. But it's just one single I lack the required gate that they prepared because the airport is closed and they have no staff and you know. <laughs> just one! So I stand in line with a million of people. I was pretty far in the back. 
One by one, they check everyone's luggage and scan their bodies. And then finally, it's my part, uh, my time. And I, I, after I'm done, I ask the airport security staff guy who's standing there, like, what's going on? And he's like, you don't know? And at this point, like me waiting in line there already took an hour. <laughs> an hour! And I was fucking tired and confused. But I was done and I walked through and I asked this guy, what's going on? He's like, hey, you don't know? And then he says, um, there's a suspicion of the T word. The T E R, you know, word. Uh, like, in your flight, I guess. And I'm like, what? Uh, oh, 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 oh okay. Okay. So after we're done, we were just like told to wait in that one room. Eventually, before like they would actually explain to us what's actually happening. You know, where we first found information? We spent in that first room, we spent like three, four hours in the middle of the night. Eventually, the airport even opened up during that time. It became morning. And then while we were there waiting, exchanging of information, uh... A news article went up that said something about our flight with something like a, a BOMB may have been in there. Mm. And I was like, oh, good to know. <laughs> yeah, so we're getting hungry and then eventually after three, three or four hours, they finally bring us some sandwiches. Everybody is like the hundreds of people from the airplane are jumping at the sandwiches like, oh, I want, I need, I need. Ugh. But we thought, okay, I mean, we're probably gonna board another plane soon, right? Right, right. So we weren't too concerned. But then eventually, they, uh... They tell us, okay, everybody, um... Sorry for the wait. Please follow us. This was some Turkish airline stuff. They tell us to follow them. Uh, and they'll bring us outside the airport to a hotel because uh, we have to take a different airplane. And we'll just, you know, they will take care of it. We just have to go to a hotel room for a while. No exact time yet, but we'll be able to take a shower and maybe take a nap, etc. So, these hundreds of people follow them through the airport. Then to the immigration, like, gate exit thingy. And I get there too. And then I am being stopped. And I am not able to leave because they ask me for, well, some of the local currency in order to get a visa. But I'm like, eh, but my flight was basically delayed because bomb and uh, they told me to go with them. I just, I'm just going to the hotel that's at the airport. And they're like, well, you need to give us money. And meanwhile, you know, they're just leaving. The other people are just leaving. The Turkish Airlines staff, etc. I was panicking. I was much younger than now, too. Mm -hmm. So that was... I was like, what the fuck do I do? Um, now, from here starts the 24 hours of doom. Because... To, to just put the story kind of shorter... Uh, I was just stuck in the airport. Without knowing when the next flight would be, they did not give us information no matter how often me and some other that people that I eventually found who also couldn't go through to the hotel and also were stuck in the airport from the same flight. Uh, I found some of them. We were going to the Turkish Airlines customer uh, service support table desk thingy uh, several times and we're asking them, begging them to give us something, to give us maybe launch access because we're like there forever um with nowhere to go and no help and no accommodation and no no information nothing no food either that was my biggest problem i guess mm. and they just ignored us we couldn't even get some launch access no we had to sleep on um the loud in the loud hall on the cold hard ground and the cold hard seats of the of the airport um when we could but i was like going mentally insane 
felt like I was going insane. We spent 24 hours there on the airport. So we kind of just gave up eventually. Oh yeah, and, and, and by the way... We never got clear information for by Turkish Airlines what happened, but what we did find out is later in the news. So basically... Uh, as soon after the flight took off... Um, a cabin attendant opened the one of the doors of the toilet. The toilets, yeah. And then inside was like written in red the name of some bomb. Like a like a, like a I don't know professional chemical name that I wouldn't know, that I wouldn't understand, like two numbers and two letters, I don't know. Yeah. And they took that as a you know, as a threat. Uh, and but after checking all the luggage, um after checking our hand luggage, they also ended up checking all the big luggages. Oh yeah, C4, that was it. <laughs> uh, turns out there was even a bomb in there, but not one that would have gone off. Like a fake one or so? I don't know. Mm, maybe just to scare? For fun? I don't understand. I still don't really know. But I did read that uh, there was something in there, in fact, but it wasn't like really endangering us. But you know, you obviously have to react, but it seemed to have been a prank. And then I read some more information that this was actually at that time happening a couple of times. Mm. It happened several times back then. It was maybe the same person, the same people doing a series of Pranks? Mm. Wasn't the only occasion where this happened with a Turkish Airlines flight. So, yeah. And I never got any compensation out of that short, already short seven day trip. I lost a whole day. Which is a lot if it's just seven days. If it's like two weeks, okay, whatever. But seven days, man. Well, thank God, nothing happened, of course. But what a surreal, weird experience. Uh, it was just like... I was so pissed because... They didn't help us at all. They didn't provide anything. I think eventually, after a lot of like pushing for it... They it did, after many, many hours, give us some food coupon for one meal at the airport in 24 hours. <laughs> ah! Me being pissed off, not wanting to support something like that, I decided to never fly with them again. So, Turkish Airlines, perms lost forever. I don't give a shit. <laughs> Spite, yes, yeah, spite. Mm. Kick it again, everyone, and welcome on board the KFP 2300. Please listen to these safety instructions to not fucking die. Okay, but this is just divine. Exquisite.